we're heading away from the castle today but we're not going far we're just going over to that little village there I'll have to come harvest that because we're still having a medieval castle day but we're also having a bit of a Minecraft day too I desperately desperately need mending I mean this pickaxe is not going to last forever I need sharpness I need unbreaking oh, that's not looking too bad this at the moment is bog standard Minecraft Plains Village and you know the villages aren't too bad since Village and Pillage came out but it's not a medieval village is it we've got two churches woot but I'm going to reduce that to one and we're going to make something that's quite important I need a trading hall oh, I really do like that <laughs> sorry I'll stop I need a trading hall, but I don't want to just make a Minecraft trading hall. I want to make something a bit more appropriate to that place. So I'm going to start by demolishing some things. And I'm going to put in my standard Anglo-Saxon village church. There'll be a link in the description to the tutorial for that. And then I'm going to make a guild hall. So, first things first, let's start taking this place apart. Well, I made a bit of a happy find. Look at this. It's a zombie spawner, and I'll show you where it is. It's not far from the village, although I got a bit carried away with it and didn't realise it was night time, and I've lost three villagers because they got zombified and then burnt up. Fortunately, the golems looked after the rest. But no, here's the village. There's the zombie spawner, because oh, I was frustrated by not being able to get that glass, so I went and forced the enchanting table to give me silk touch, and by the time it did, I didn't have the levels, I only had 10 levels left, and oh, the stupid thing was on a 3, so I needed 30. How annoying is that? And then I came down here to dig some coal and hopefully kill a couple of zombies or something. I found a zombie spawner, so I have rigged up a very, very basic XP farm. I mean, look at that. Water in the corners, a little trough here, and slabs to stop the baby zombies getting through. I've just got six more levels to go, then I'll have silk touch, and then I can get back to dismantling the village. Only this time, I'm going to keep an eye on my clock. It was the whole point of having one in the first place. I'd lost some villages but I haven't there's seven which is how many I should have had one of them's lost his profession but there's seven okay that's good so are you ready there's the well there's the village there's the start of the village it needs some houses in but until I get the next building done that's what we've got. I want to change the colour of a couple of these roofs, make them a bit darker, but look at the state of that axe. It's got to wait till I get mending. And I can't get mending till I do the next thing. Well, I could, but, you know, one thing at a time. Let's do it in the order that I want to do it. And I've got seven iron golems wandering around. It's insane. Yes, there's no roof on the church. I want deep slate for that. I haven't had time to go get it. But, you know, waiting to raise the money for the leads on the church roof, that, that's not unheard of. That's not without precedent. What I want to build now, though, I do want a trading hall. And I thought the best way to do that was to actually make a guild hall. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll probably have to back and forth a bit for supplies but we'll do what we can in the meantime I want a bit of a portico at the front that's a start right I want the 
bottom floor to be in brick. I've got some brick and some granite. Whether I've got enough, we'll see. I'll probably make the rest in dirt if I have to, and then I'll just replace as I can. Yes, that's desperate. I am desperate. I want some terracotta as well. Oh, no. No, no, no. That bit's open. That's a bit of a saving. Oh, well. Now, I want some plain terracotta too, but that's going to have to wait as well. I love cats, but that one I cannot get to go back up to the castle with me. Just wants to be down here in the village. And loves getting in the way. Shush. So I'm just going to mark out the perimeter of the guild hall to start with. Probably do with put... Do you think you're a cat? Thank you. Let's put some dirt there. Okay. So, what was a guild hall? Well, to put it in the bluntest terms, it was the headquarters for a guild. Yeah, hello, pussycat. So, what was a guild? Guilds were a collective of initially merchants, but then also craftspeople. The first medieval guild, probably, was established in Gelderland in 1020. That's in the Netherlands. Guilds then sprung up across Europe and there was an established merchants guild in London by 1120. There may well be earlier ones, but that's what I could find for certain. They flourished for the next few centuries, but by the 17th century had started to decline. Guilds still exist now, but they don't have the power and influence that they enjoyed in the medieval period. They started in medieval times because you had merchants, you had traders, you had craftspeople, and the way that they could sell their wares was to travel around individually. Minecraft's got them, wandering traders. What's the problem with being a wandering trader? What's the problem with being a single merchant? Think of how we regard them. <sighs> with suspicion. They're con men. They're thieves. At times they're useful. I've certainly found them useful with getting saplings for up there. But most people just regard them as pests. They're there to cause trouble. So what happens? They meet with unfortunate accidents. Um... I'm not paying attention. We rob them for llamas, leather or leashes. If you are a medieval merchant and you watched what we do to wandering traders, you'd likely be looking at your own future. Mind you, telling anyone that you have a magic box with little blocky people in it that move and make noises, you've got a whole other future in front of you and it's very short. And you'll be lucky if you live long enough to hear the word inquisition. But I digress. So the future's pretty bleak if you're wandering around as a lone trader. There's bandits on the road. There's who knows what. It was a dangerous life. So they started to band together. Safety in numbers. And then they began to make formal associations and make a base for themselves. And the guild was born, or reborn. Guilds existed in classical Rome. They were called collegia. Singular form collegium. But they would have been recognisable to medieval Europeans and once established for merchants it was only a short step for guilds to form around craftspeople. The word guild is derived from the Anglo-Saxon verb yelden, to pay or to yield, or the noun guild, a payment or a service. To be a member of a guild required the payment of a subscription fee and the adherence to certain standards and duties, and membership was only granted with accreditation. I have to work out where the doors to this thing are. There's going to be doors up there. Uh, we'll have one here. And... 
one there. There were other names for guilds in the British Isles and on the continent. Collegium, that stayed in use. Company, corporation, livery, society, fellowship, fraternity, brotherhood, to name some. And you can see from those last three that guilds had male associations. Some were male only, but a lot weren't, albeit in a limited capacity. If a male guild member died, his widow could take over his business and his guild membership. And this will, of course, look much better once I have some extra blocks mixed in for texturing. You're just going to have to bear with me for the moment. There were also guilds that offered places to women as a matter of course, although often this was in lower positions and without any real authority. Thanks, guys. There were some guilds that were only for women, concentrated mainly in textile production, such as the silk weavers. Who could be a member and what they could do varied from guild to guild, country to country, and over time. Guild charters spelt out every aspect of the guild administration, from fees, rules and community obligations, through to the keeping of guild hounds, and everything in between. Yes, some of them had mandated puppy dogs. Many of the guild charters survive. Some have been digitised. They make interesting reading. Guilds were responsible for the training of apprentices, the fixing of fair prices and the assurance of a level of quality for the goods produced and sold. If someone was overcharged or if workmanship was substandard, the guild member responsible had to rectify or recompense at their own expense from their own materials. And repeated violation could result in a loss of membership and a ban on trading in that town altogether, along with, of course, loss of reputation. There was a hierarchy to guilds. Masters were at the top, then journeymen, and at the bottom were the apprentices. Only masters could take apprentices. The general age to begin an apprenticeship was 12, but some guilds took on children as young as six. The length of apprenticeship varied too, but could range from two to up to 14 years. During this time, the apprentice wasn't paid but lived with their master who was required to provide not just education but also bed and board and tools of the trade. Apprentices were also not permitted to marry and not permitted to drink in public houses. There would be other restrictions specific to the craft or trade concerned. Um, I want another door. Uh, we can probably do with a door here. And do we need another one? Yeah, we can have another door here. Okay. All right, now I need to work out placement of windows. Once the apprenticeship was complete, to the master's and guild satisfaction, the apprentice was elevated to the position of journeyman. They could now earn from their craft or trade, they were allowed to marry should they wish, but they were not allowed to take on apprentices of their own. They could also work on a masterpiece or masterwork to be submitted to the guild for assessment of elevation to the rank of master. This work was carried out in their own time and at their own expense, and was no guarantee of success. Too many masters in one area could mean not enough apprentices to go around apart from anything else. So guilds could end up reluctant to elevate every journeyman who applied to be a master. Uh, that's it, I've run out of brick. And I am not happy with that. Let's get rid of that. Put that there and put the brick there. All right, I've just got to decide for... Oh, no, I don't like that either. Oh, yuck, what am I doing? This is something you've got to do sometimes. Lay some blocks down and then step back and see if really you like what you've done or it needs adjusting. In this case... 
It needs adjusting quite a bit. Hello. All right, I am filling in the empty spaces with dirt. I said I'd do this. Because there aren't many. And I do need to get on. And as I said, if I can swap in some terracotta, that will look a lot better too. We'll get there. This is going to take a little bit. It's going to go slowly. Okay, it's not off to a bad start. There was also a strong social and community uh -huh. aspect to guilds. They had responsibilities towards their communities that were expected to be met. This could include care for the elderly, infirm and disabled, care for orphans, care for the sick. They might be expected to keep the streets of the town clean, which isn't as bad as it sounds. Gong farmers paid good money for collected poo. What was expected again varied according to guild, place and time. So, on to the guild hall itself. While trade secrets were just that, secret and to be kept within the guild, the guild hall was not a locked and wholly private building. Part of it had to be given over to the public. There was accommodation for those under the guild's care. There was often a chapel attached for members and the public. There was a general public meeting area where anyone could trade. Guilds were often the centre for the local commodities market. And the great hall within the guild hall was also available not just for members, but also for general public celebration, a hall for hire. Areas of the guild hall would be off limits to the public. Private meeting rooms, record offices, and of course, the guild tavern. Well, it's not the best stained glass window in the world, but it's using the glass from the old churches, so waste not, want not. And having said that, oh, but three windows. Mm. Don't worry, I'm just letting my sacred numbers get the better of me. If I can combine aesthetics and symbolism, yay. And if I can't, I'll go with aesthetics every time. Oh, you're a bit imposing. Okay. Oh, that's much better. Oh, that's, that's much better. We're doing that. Right, so the windows are quite simple. It's just dark wood bars. Now, this area here, all of this, I mean, that's the chapel. But this is all the undercroft. And the undercroft is supported by great big wooden pillars. There we go. They're the supporting pillars of the Undercroft. The Undercroft was the public area. Get off. Cat. Oh, I'll get them out of the other box. So what I need now is plenty of support for the upper floor. So we're going to have a very long beam and then beams going crossways as well. guild hall. Let's go inside and have a look. Now I've got to tell you there isn't a lot going on inside because this is going to be a trading hall and I've got to get all that set up. And this guy, if I shift the brewing stand into the chapel, he wants nothing to do with it. I'm going to have to sort that out. 
But anyway, this is the chapel. That's where the brewing stand is going to go when I can get him to cooperate. This is the undercroft. This is the public part of the guild hall. So I'll be putting some trades in here because, you know, people could come here and trade and meet. We've got a little pauper's dormitory. And this will be an infirmary. And again, I'll have particular trades in here. So not much going on at the moment. And if we come up... Oh yeah, that's just a loft space. I might put some extra storage in here if I need it. But this is the great hall of the guild hall. So this is where the guild members would meet, where they'd all come together because, you know, the masters would live out in the village. That's where they'd have their schools. But they'll have meetings here. This could also be used by the public for celebrations. Um... And then we've got private rooms here. And these would just be for the use of the guild members. So we've got a couple. And then <laughs> this, this is the guild tavern. Now this would only be for guild members. I've not finished decorating this yet because this is going to be my trading hall for librarians. So I've got all the enchanted books. And I do not want to put barrels in here until I've got these guys sorted out, or they're all just going to want to be fishermen, and I don't want them to be fishermen. But you had a guild tavern because apprentices weren't allowed to go to the local tavern. And think about why. The guilds teach you the secrets of your trade, things that can only be known by the members who have paid their fee to be a member. You've got an apprentice... Goes down to the local tavern. There's a wary fellow there who plies them with drink. And before you know it, they're telling all the secrets they know and more besides. You can't expect them to not want to drink in the evenings with their friends. So you've got a guild tavern. So it prevents the journeymen and masters from getting out of control too. Although they can go to the local tavern if they want to. But here's a place where the guild members can also just kick back and relax with each other after a long day. So, the guild tavern. That's our guild hall. We'll have a look at the outside. But there we go. Brick and half timber with wattle and daub. And in vanilla, look, it's not the best solution in the world, but it's the one that I came by. There's this side, that's the tavern wall. That's the chapel side. I'm not sure if I'll leave the chapel like this or not. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not thrilled. I'll have to think. I'm always thinking, aren't I? Blech. And sometimes not enough and sometimes way too much. And then this is the front. Now there's still more to do. I've got to do like a little forecourt. I've got to set up this area. And I've got, to, I've got to take that down and replace it with proper village houses. I want to change the colours of some of those roofs and put some more houses in and put a wall around and get some farms set up. And that's a whole lot of stuff. And we'll do that next time. There's end cards on the screen to some more of my tutorials. And if you've made it this far, put the secret code phrase in the comments. Guildhound. And I'll see you next time. Bye.